Amen, 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 amen. Would you bow your heads with me? Heavenly Father, in the mighty, holy, and precious name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we come giving you praise and worshiping your holy name. You are the great I am, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, 
We worship and adore you, Father. Father God, we thank you for another opportunity to celebrate Mother's Day in the year 2020. Thank you, Father God, for the gift of mothers. Father God, we ask you to bless mothers everywhere today, this Mother's Day. Please bless them, Father God. Comfort her, Father God. Help her, Father God. Help her loving heart to continue to love and to give of herself to others. Strengthen her when she's down and give her hope when she's discouraged. Most of all, Lord, on this Mother's Day, give her the graces she most needs and desires today. Father God, we just ask your blessings upon our whole country, Father God. As a matter of fact, the whole world, Father God. We all stand in the need of healing and we all stand in the need of your hand upon us, Father God, your loving hand upon us. Oh, Father God, we thank you for all your many blessings. We ask you, Father God, to continue to heal, continue to strengthen, Father God. Oh, Lord, we know that it's being done right now, Father God. Lord, as we said before, we're waiting for the manifestation, Father God, to see this COVID-19 completely dried up, Father God, in the name of Jesus, not just this disease, Father God, but cancer and diabetes, Father God, lupus, Father God, Parkinson's, Father God, high blood pressure, Father God, and on and on and on, Father God, healing in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just bless you and glorify you this day, Father God. We ask you to bless the speaker, Father God. They'll be bringing us the word today, Father God. Lord, anoint them, Father God, to speak your words of truth, Father God, in the name of Jesus, and then give us ears to hear and eyes to see, Father God, and the will to follow you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. So we ask you to bless this service, Father God. We ask you to bless the offerings, Father God. Lord, the times are tight, Father God. Money's hard to come by, Father God. But yet you still bless, Father God. We still have food in our, in our homes, Father God. We have our homes, Father God. Oh, Lord, you're still providing for us, Father God. Even in the times of phantom, Father God, you provide for your people. You're a good God, Father God. And everything that we have belongs to you anyway, Father God. So help us to give, Father God, that your work might go on, Father God. Three Ps is doing so much, Father God, of your work, Father God. Feeding the hungry, Father God. Visiting those that are sick and shut in, Father God. Visiting the homeless, Father God. Visiting those that are in hospitals, Father God. Oh, Lord, thank you, Father God, for three Ps in the ministry. Jail, prison ministries, Father God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Youth ministries, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Women ministries, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Even going, Brother Ben, going in the neighborhoods, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, Father God, give us the resources that they need, Father God, in the name of Jesus. So, Father God, we ask you to bless every mother that's participating today, Father God, a special blessing upon them, their lives, their children, their families, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. For those that are lonely and their mothers maybe have gone on to heaven, Father God, won't you comfort them and give them peace today, Father, in the name of Jesus. And those, Father God, that are standing in for mothers, Father God, won't you give them a special blessing today, Father God? Let them know that they're appreciated and they're loved, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. You do all things well. We glorify your name. We magnify your name. For you are worthy of all of our praise. In Jesus' name we pray and ask these things. Amen. Happy Mother's Day, all mothers. Uh, today, I, I want to read from uh, Psalm 67. It says, God, be gracious to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that your way may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy for you will judge the peoples with uprightness and guide the nations on the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its produce. God, our God, bless us. God blesses us that all the ends of the earth may fear him. Amen. 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 God is a way maker. I don't know about you, but I've seen God do amazing things, and I know he is still doing amazing things today. He is our light in a world that is so dark. God is our way maker. Hallelujah.
you are here moving in the midst i worship you i worship you you are
there is mm -hmm. none like God. We can search this whole entire world, but we will never ever find none like him. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for being who you are in our lives. We thank you, Hallelujah. I know you know it's sing along with me. We say there is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search for all eternity, Lord, and find there is none like you. Oh, let your voice say, there is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search for all the eternity, Lord, and find there is none like you. Praise the Lord. Why don't we can all come off a of mute and give the Lord some praise for a few moments? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, 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 Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. The kids are beautiful. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, Thank you. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day. Hi. 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 How sweet is that? Praise the Lord. How priceless. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, happy day to all the precious mothers and sisters of Zion. We just thank the Lord for this day that the Lord has made. Oh, what beautiful mothers we're surrounded with. And look at this mother with her quiver full, all those precious babies, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. We thank the Lord, amen. I see your thumb up, Renaya. praise God, amen. You know, God is just good all by himself and there's none like him in all of the earth. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 
Praise God. My heart is full. Praise God. Thank you, Sister Amanda, for blessing us in praise and worship on this morning, allowing the Lord to use you to edify the body of Christ and bring glory to God. What a blessing. Praise God. We just thank the Lord for all things. And the power hour lesson this morning, God is promising us, promising us peace and we have peace in the midst of the storm. God, we say thank you. Praise God. So we just thank the Lord. Just, uh, Evangelist Dolores is praying us in and ushering in the spirit of God on today. And Brother Gary coming with the scripture every Sunday, uh, every time uh, Gary's to read a scripture, the Lord just blesses him and give him just what the church needs. So we're just grateful. We're thankful for all the saints that are, that are on this Zoom call on today. Uh, we want to share a message today uh, before and after the blessing. Praise God. We uh, Our central character today will be Hannah in the book of 1 Samuel. But before and after the blessing, uh, how many of us remember times in our life where we were really maybe in a bad way? Maybe it could have been the times where we didn't know the Lord, but there was a longing in our heart. And lo and behold, by and by, one day, the Lord Jesus comes into our life and saves us. So we have before and after the blessing. Because when I came to know Christ, everything changed. I found myself and to understand that I'm a blessed man. I have the spirit of the living God indwelling me. I'm sure many of us have had many times where we had petitions up before the Lord that things were heavy on our hearts, that situations were not conducive to what, to life and what, what we would desire. And, and, and but, but again, after a while and by and by, God blessed us and he brought us through. You know, it's important for us to know that God has a blessing in store for us. I wanna put myself in the place of blessing. How do I do that? By honoring God and seeking his face and crying out to him before and after the blessing. Praise God, praise God. Uh, before the Lord blessed Sandy and I to be married, it was a hard time. It was a, a, a crucial time and a sad time, a crazy time in my life. But God got in the midst of it. And he turned all of that into a blessing. It was such a blessing. And I, I was just thinking about this a little while ago to where uh, after being married one time, first time to the same lady and not understanding marriage, but then the second time, then even in times of sorrow, I thank God that I was able to, to sorrow with her and her with me as we, we, Lay it out and wait, waited on God. And then God sent the blessing. And so we just praise God on today, on this Mother's Day. And we, we're just so grateful. You know, uh, we're going to look at 1 Samuel. Uh, it says, uh, we're going to look at, start at first verse. But, you know, talking about a blessing, I, you know, sometimes the scripture gives us the definition of a word. Sometimes we don't need to go to Webster or to the college dictionary or whatever, but in, Psalm, in Proverbs 10 and 22, it says the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no sorrow with it. Talking about before and after the blessing, God makes our heart rich. God makes our very so rich. God is rich in mercy, and we just thank the Lord. So his, his blessings uh, makes one rich, and there's no sorrow with the blessings of the Lord. Uh, we thank God for that. Uh, we're going to look at the passage today, and uh, originally was going to start at uh, verse 8, but you know, you just can't jump right in the middle of something. When it comes to the Word of God, we need to see the context of it, and especially as we talk about 
handle on, on today. We need to know where all this is going. We, we, need, to, we, we need to understand that, uh, you know, this is almost chronological with uh, the book of Judges that we got Ruth in the middle. And we know that on the last verse in the book of Judges that all the people did what was right in their own eyes. So we, and so we had, there was an issue right there. And we kind of see that today where folks are just doing whatever comes to their own mind and calling it right. Uh, and also we're gonna see that, uh, you know, where, where we're in a period of Judges and we're gonna talk about how, uh, uh, Eli at this time, if before Hannah even praised, was the last uh, was the last judge in a in a sense and a priest. But he had some wicked sons. So let's let's read let's read the scripture and then we'll we'll see what the Lord has to say to you, precious mothers and children of mothers and and fathers of of wives today who have who have bore your children. Let's see what God has to say in his word to us on today, before and after the blessing. Amen. Praise God. So there's a few tough words when we first start in verse one. Let's see if we can get through these. <clears throat> now, there was a certain man, a Ramathian Zophan of the mountains of Ephraim. And his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuth, an Ephraimite. He lived in Ephraim. Uh, you know, Elkanah is very close to Elkanah, what we heard and studied in Power Hour, which means uh, God is a jealous God, but that's the only kind of jealousy that God can have. This Elkanah, which is very close, his, his name simply means God has created. <laughs> Uh, uh, so in verse two, and he had, now here, here we go. Like they say, like the little kids say, here we go now. It's, it's been the start. And he had two wives. Now we know that that's a problem right off the bat. Anytime you got polygamy, anytime a, got, a man got more than one wife, he gonna have some problems. Y'all still on mute, but I'll amen for you. Praise the Lord. All right. He says, uh, uh, so uh, he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. This man went up from his city yearly to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. During this time, Shiloh was just, just shy of Jerusalem, but it was the place of worship and the tabernacle. Also, the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. And whenever the time came for Elkanah to make an offering, he would go, he would give portions to Penina, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters. But, but to Hannah, he would give a double portion. For he loved Hannah, although the Lord, the Lord had closed her womb. And her rival, which is Elkanah's other wife, and her rival also provoked her severely to make her miserable because the Lord had closed her womb. Here you got a dysfunctional family. You got a situation where the man loved one more than the other and the one he loved less have the children and she's wearing Hannah out. You don't have no children? You know, uh, what's wrong with you? That, was a, that wasn't a, in those days, it could be seen as a curse from God. But we know that God has a plan. Matter of fact, uh, Hannah's name means favor or grace. Praise God. So, so it ain't over till God says it's over. You know, uh, 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 you know uh, uh, before and after the blessing, Elder Jones really blessed me this morning. He was sharing some of his life story of escapade where it was kind of a dark thing. 
but all the blessing came. Thank you, Lord. And the Lord came into his life. And now the man stands flat-footed and preaches the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ to a dark and dying world. Thank God for the blessing. So she provoked her, her rival also provoked her severely to make her miserable. To, can you imagine on purpose making her miserable? Because the Lord had closed her womb. So it was year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord that she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat before the blessing. Oh, she was, she was just beat down. She was feeling less than and, and not equal to. But thanks be unto God. You know, there's a whole lot of women that are mothers at heart before children even come their way. And sometimes uh, there's those who may never have children, but have always been a mother to someone. My auntie never had, Aunt Rachel never had children but we were her children. She would, she would take, care of, take care of us, her and her husband. And we never wanted for anything when my mother was, was by herself. Dad's nowhere in sight and, and she's working two jobs. They were always there. So thank God for mothers on today. So I say all that to say, Hannah had a problem. Hannah didn't feel good. But here we go in verse eight. Her husband, Elkanah, he said, why are you crying, Hannah? He would ask her, why aren't you eating? He understood, he knew something was wrong. Why be downhearted just because you have no children? So he knew what the problem was, what was plaguing her. He said, you got me. Now I know that's got to be enough. That's got to be better than 10 sons. And I'm sure in the heart you said, no, that ain't doing it. Because <laughs> there was a longing in a heart. There, there was a, a desire embedded deep down in her DNA that God had put there. The scriptures say God closed her womb. See, life and death is in God's hand. God is the giver of life. Thank God for Jesus. Praise the Lord. I love going to the neonatal sections in the hospital, see all those little babies just bouncing in there and just wiggling around. And I say, wow, God, you did that. So God, this stuff is way over my head, just like the universe is over my head and the ocean's deep is over my head, Lord God, to see a, a woman with child and give birth. <coughs> Father, that is way over my head, but you're an awesome God. You're a mighty God and you are the giver of life. <clears throat> Verse nine, once after a sacrificial meal at Shiloh, Hannah got up and went to pray. Eli the priest was sitting at his customary place beside the entrance of the tabernacle. You know, I'm so glad that the heaviness in her heart did not stop her from praying. Sometimes situations can get so tough on us, we stop praying. We stop seeking God. We stop looking unto the Lord. But Hannah, she went to the tabernacle and she prayed. The Bible said in verse 10, Hannah was in deep anguish, crying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord. How many know that God can't stand no tears? When, when God sees the broken hearts, he saw the children of Israel. He's saying, I have come down to deliver them because I've, I've heard their cries. I've seen their tears. He's the God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He never changes. So Adam was deep in anguish, crying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord. And she made this vow. Listen to this, saints. O Lord of heaven's armies, O Lord of hosts, if you will look upon my sorrow and answer my prayer and give me a son. She didn't say give me a child. 
She was specific in her prayer. You know, sometimes we need to be specific in what we're praying for. Because God knows our heart already. So ain't no need to say, well, I ain't going to say that. Part. No, if it's in your heart, say it. Because God hears. She said, uh, and, and answer my prayer and give me a son. Then I will give him back to you. He will be yours for his entire lifetime. And as a sign that he has been dedicated to the Lord, his hair will never be cut. See, she said, Father, I'm, I'm going to give you that son. And, and he's going to be a Nazarite from birth. His hair won't be cut. He won't touch nothing dead. He won't drink any alcohol. She And we all know that when it's all said and done, we're going to have to make a commitment to God for ourselves. And we're going to see that he did that as well. Her son that hasn't got here yet. So in verse 12, as she was praying to the Lord, Eli the priest, he watched her, seeing her lips moving, but hearing no sound. He thought she had been drinking. You know, uh, my, my first inclination for a subject was this, for this message was, she ain't drunk. She's, she's in need. Praise God. But you know, uh, seeing her lips moving, but hearing no sound. Have, have you ever been, maybe just praying and heaven, maybe you didn't even have the, the words to pray. <laughs> Excuse me. Maybe you just moaned. Maybe you just thought you were saying so, but you're praying, your lips are moving, but it's all in your heart. See, listen, Eli didn't hear nothing, but God heard everything. Thank you, Jesus. So, and I, so as she, she, as she was praying to the Lord, Eli watched her seeing her lips moving, but hearing no sound. He thought she had been drinking. <clears throat> he said, much you come here drunk, you gonna come into the house of God drunk. <laughs> you see, sometimes we may not have the discernment that we need at the time. He was a priest. He was a man of stature. He read this part wrong. But that's not the end of the story either. So you must you come here drunk, he demanded. Throw away your wine. <laughs> she said, oh, no, sir. Now those lips were moving, but she was saying something. Oh, no, sir, she replied. I haven't been drinking wine or anything stronger. She said, but I am very discouraged. I mean, I am wiped out. And I was pouring out my heart to the Lord. I'm not drunk. I, I'm talking to the Lord because he knows me. He knows my pain. He knows my agony. He knows my, and, and, and on top of that, I can just hear it in my sanctified mindset. And, and I don't have, don't, don't, I don't know what to do. I don't know where else to go, but I'm calling on the Lord. And she said, um, I don't think I'm a wicked one for I've been praying out of a great anguish and sorrow. In that case, Eli said, now watch this. Now, he missed it the first time. He thought that this one was probably drunk. But see, now the spirit of God is kicking in and God is in the midst of this thing. And he said, in that case, Eli said, go in peace. May the God of Israel grant the request you have asked of him. Now, what, what was the request? God, give me a son. And God, if you give me a son, uh, give me back. And I mean, I imagine a natural mind would say, wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean you want a son so bad, but then you're giving back to the Lord? Like some folks say, you've given money to that church. You've given tithes and all. You know, but see, see, the natural man cannot perceive the things of God. Old song used to say, I made a vow to the Lord, and I won't take it back. Amen. Praise God. And so, so may, the Lord, may the God of Israel grant the request you have asked of him. And watch this. In verse 18, she said, oh, thank you, sir. She explained. This, 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 is, this is what really uh, uh, gets, blows me, Elder John. Then she, she went back and began to eat again, and she was no longer sad. Y'all get this? 
the baby, she, she ain't had no baby yet, but she had the word of God. The word of God came from the man of God and she was no longer sad. She received the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Mother's Day, hallelujah. So, so before and after. So, so, wow, this, this, this is, this is good stuff. So, I don't want to miss a point here. Hold on, you all. Hold on one second here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I got some wrap up stuff here too, but we we don't want to miss we don't want to miss this. All right, verse nineteen. Thank you, Lord. Then they rose up early in the morning and worshiped before the Lord. She's worshiping before the Lord. She's got a word from the Lord and returned and came to their house at Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife. They had relations. And the Lord remembered her. Remember the old song, do Lord, do Lord. Come on, y'all. Do remember me. All right. <laughs> the Lord remembered her. So it came to pass in the process of time See, before and after the blessing. Let's start talking about some of the after here. So it came to pass in the process of time that Hannah conceived and bore a child, now bore a son and called his name Samuel saying, because, because I have asked for him from the Lord. And guess what Samuel mean? Asked of the Lord. <laughs> she named it just what? just what she had asked the Lord for. God has blessed. Now, mind you, she's been barren. Mind you, she's been ridiculed. Mind you, she's been given a word from God. Mind you, she's yet heard of worshiping and praising God. And now God has delivered her. And somebody could say to Hannah at that point, happy Mother's Day. Thank you, Jesus, because God had blessed her woman. She brought forth a son. Thank you, Lord. And, 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 and now the man Elkadon and all his house went up to offer to the Lord the yearly sacrifice and his vow. But Hannah did not go up, for she said to her husband, not until the child is weaned. And in those days, it was normally two to three years uh, before a child would be weaned. Then I would take him that he may appear before the Lord and remain there forever. You know, Elkanah, he kind of knew who he was dealing with. So Elkanah, her husband, said to her, do what seems best to you. She didn't, he didn't say, you ain't taking my boy nowhere. He, he, didn't, he didn't do that. He, he, he gave her, he knew her. See, it's good to know who you're dealing with. It's good to know who your spouse is. It's good to know what God is doing in their life. So he didn't put up a roadblock like some folks would do today. Only let the Lord establish his word. Then the woman stayed and nursed her son until she had weaned him. Now, when she had weaned him, verse 24, she took him with her and three bulls, one ephah of flour and, and a skin of wine and brought him to the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was young and so forth. And so it goes on. So we see that now <clears throat> she had received the blessing. And you know what? When God does something for you, it, 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 it causes you to give him praise. It causes you to acknowledge him, praise God. So in chapter two, after all this have transpired, Hannah began to pray. And the scripture says, and Hannah prayed, I won't read it all, but maybe just the first two or three verses. Uh, and, and Hannah prayed, yeah, verse one and two. And Hannah prayed and said, my heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. I smile at my enemies. 
sound like something Jesus would say. I smiled at my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation, God, in your deliverance. No one is holy like the Lord, for there is none beside you, nor is there any rock like our God. I'm talking about after the blessing, praise God. See, sometimes we got to go through to come out. And so later on in that chapter of chapter two of 1 Samuel, uh, verse 18, listen to this. But Samuel ministered before the Lord, even as a child. Now, mind you, he has a godly mother who has dedicated him to the Lord, took her baby to the house of the Lord and left him there because that's the vow she made to the God of all creation. God honors faithfulness. God honors dedication. So, so Samuel, young Samuel, young fella, uh, you know, this reminds me of train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they become of age, they will not depart. The seed has been planted. See, and this is why a lot of times our children today they try to leave the church, leave home, and get out there in the world. They overmatched because they've been raised up in the ways of the Lord. He says, so, but Samuel ministered before the Lord even as a child wearing a linen ephod. Moreover, his mother, listen to this, mothers and fathers on today, sisters and brothers. Moreover, his mother used to make him a little robe. See? He, was, he may have been in the house of the Lord, but he was still her baby. And she still was going to take care of her baby. That's what mothers do. Mother would stand for the baby when everybody else would turn their back. Thank you, Lord. But that's not the case here. So his, more of his mother used to make him a little robe and bring it to him year by year, year after year. Thank you, Lord. You, I, I imagine that Samuel knew he was loved. He may have been in the house of the Lord, but he knew he could call on mama. She was always there. Mother, and more of his mother used to make him a little robe and bring it to him year by year when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. Yet godly people, yet having worship on their mind. Praise God. And Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife and say, the Lord give you descendants from this woman for the loan that was given to the Lord. He didn't say for Penina now. This blessing is for Elkanah and Hannah. He said, uh, the Lord give you descendants from the, now, now, mind you, she didn't ask but for one son. You know, God is able to give you way more than you ask for, to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can think or ask of him. Praise God. So, so the Lord give you descendants from this woman for the loan, for the vow, for the promise that she kept that was given to the Lord. Then they would go, then, then they would go to their own home. And the Lord visited Hannah. The Lord visited grace. The Lord visited favor. He visited Hannah so that she conceived and bore three sons and two daughters. Meanwhile, the child Samuel grew before the Lord. He would become the last judge in Israel. He would be the first one to anoint a king by the name of Saul. Then he would, his, his successor would be David. God used this, this, this child that was dedicated to him before he was born in a mighty way and stand as a pillar in the, in the heritage of the church. So wrapping this up, 1 Peter 5 and 10, saying, say, because uh, the point is before and after the blessing, somebody may be going through right now. Somebody may be having a difficult time right now. Somebody may be in a place you don't know if you're going to see tomorrow or not, or, or if you're going to have what you need, or, or you may, may be some persecution coming your way. But in 1 Peter 5 and 10, 
It say, but may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, thank you, God. Anybody suffered a little bit right now? Uh, have you suffered for a while? He said, after you have suffered for a while, he will perfect you, establish you, strengthen and settle you. Be like that tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season. Psalms 30 and five say, for his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Praise God. Let's give the Lord a hand. Praise for the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. So in closing, I just want to say again, happy Mother's Day to all you precious mothers of three Ps and are connected with three Ps and all you precious sisters on today. I pray that this will be a, 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 a day of rest and and uh, just joyful fellowship at home with the families and that God will meet every need in your life. Those deep things that nobody know but you and God, that he will bless you and that he will bring it to pass. In the name of Jesus, praise God. Elder Jones, would you close us out today, brother? Father, we're thankful for these words that you have given to us. We're thankful, Lord, for uh, a word of encouragement, especially to these mothers, Lord, whom you have given us. We all have or have had mothers, and we can probably look back at in some point in time and be glad for the mother we've had. And so, Lord, we're thankful that we know that the there are times when mothers fail, fathers fail, but you said in your word that when my mother and father forsake me, yeah. you're there with me. But Lord, we're thankful for our mothers today. We're thankful for this day that you've given to acknowledge them, to encourage them, to bless them. We're thankful for every mother that is alive and in good health and strength. And Father, for those mothers that are suffering that are in pain that are, have diseased bodies that are having uh, issues issues financially issues with children issues with husbands god we're asking that you bless them this morning this afternoon lord we're asking that you touch the situation lord encourage their hearts today and let them know lord that despite how this world has treated them how this world has turn its back on them, how uh, family members have turned on them. Lord, you said you'd never leave us. Your love is a love that's beyond our understanding and it's everlasting. And so Lord, we thank you. We thank you for all that you've done for us all through the years. We're thankful, Father, for the years you've given to us mm -hmm. and for every day you give us. We're thankful, Lord, we realize with this uh, virus and this pandemic that every day is a gift. Uh, you said that as the day was so our strength be, and Lord, you said tomorrow was not promised. And so, Lord, we take this opportunity, this day, this is the day that you have made. We rejoice and are glad in it. And you said, harden not our hearts as in the day of judgment. Lord, this may be the day someone here listening to my words may need to call on you right now. This may be the last opportunity, Lord, and we ask that you touch, touch Whoa. their heart. Ask, Lord, draw them close to you by cords of love because you never stop loving them because you are love. And Lord, you sent Jesus to pay the price for sin. And so we thank you for that. We're thankful, Father, for these that don't know you or want to know you in a greater way, God, we ask that you, you touch them, Lord. Show them how much you love them. Bless them in this day. And, oh, God, we thank you. We thank you for our pastor and for these words of encouragement for mothers and for children. We thank you, Lord, that children are a blessing from the Lord, and we're thankful. We ask, Lord, that you touch our children this morning. We ask that you bless them, Lord, with a sound mind. Give them a heart to know the living God this morning, this afternoon. 
we thank you for all these things and ask, Lord, that you bless us in the rest of this day. We ask, Lord, that you touch the rest of this day for the mothers and continue to encourage them, feed them, uh, and uh, let families enjoy one another as best we can in this the situation that we're in. We thank you for this day, and we love you we, as best we know how. We thank you for these things. We ask in Jesus precious name. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Praise God. And you know, we, we thank you for, for the offering as well. Uh, the tithes and offer this continue to go into the storehouse. Father God, we just ask you to bless each and every one that's uh, giving into the house of the Lord for the upbuilding of your kingdom, Father God, in these trying times that we're in. We just pray that you would bless some 36 and 100 fold. In Jesus' name, we bless you. Amen. Amen.